Here Jeff said this. Worst exercise is when it comes to causing hernias in the gym. But it's not true. Here he said this to millions of people. There really is no right side to put the dumbbell in because the exercise itself is trash if you're trying to train your oblique. Which is also false. And none of the following data is actually. Today I'm going to share with you seven exercises that I swear I will never do again. Picked up. Like every other week, Jeff Cavalier from AthleanX.com AthleanX.com.com.com Who has the biggest fitness channel in the world. Like his name, AthleanX, he came to put an X on exercises he says we must never do again. Today I'm going to share with you seven exercises that I swear I will never do again. Among them are muscle ups, rows, ab exercises, leg extensions, and almost all shoulder exercises because of one reason, internal rotation. Into an internally rotated position from an internally rotated position to internal rotation at the shoulder but it's false. So instead of internal rotation, let's externally rotate the truth. Because I don't know what these exercises did to Jeff and why it sounds like they broke into his house. A shit exercise once will always be a shit exercise. But none of Jeff's claims about any exercise he hates are correct. Dot com, dot com, dot com. And it all begins with this. One of the more serious injuries that can happen is a hernia, which is a bulge that comes out of the body. But what is it that comes out? So mostly fat and part of the small intestine that escapes. But it's not always in the growing area. Sometimes it's also near the belly button, like you see here. Yeah, not a picnic. But what does it have to do with Jeff? So Jeff, for years, since the dinosaur era back in 2015, caused a hernia. It's the one-arm dumbbell row. And again, in case we forgot in 2018, worst exercise is when it comes to causing hernias in the gym. And again, in case we banged our heads on the wall and forgot again in 2022, two hernias were incurred by me on the same exercise. And before we get another reminder in 2026, 2028, 2049, and 2051, remind yourself that it's not true. Okay, that's better. A, apart from Jeff Cavalier from athlinex.com, in the entire scientific literature, in any language, there isn't a single piece of evidence that someone did rose and got a hernia directly from it. There's this case study, but this was about a 53-year-old woman. It wasn't an inguinal hernia like he says happens from the exercise. I would show you my bulge, but I'd have to show you all my bulges because it's pretty low down right next to the jump. And it also wasn't from dumbbell rows, rather from a rowing machine. And apart from that, that there's nothing. .com. So option one is to blindly trust Jeff or option two and my preferred one is to read this review whose title is literally it is highly unlikely that the development of an abdominal wall hernia can be attributable to a single strenuous event. And it's funny that he mentioned rows as a cause for hernia. I've had two hernias literally doing this exercise alone. But didn't say it also has a genetic component more common in older people linked to lower BMI and high intra-abdominal pressure. Meaning this exercise is safe to use, at least until 2026. Next. Now the next exercise hurt me a little in the stomach, especially in the oblique area, because just when I wanted to train them with some side bends, Jeff said this. People will do this exercise trying to sculpt out a midsection. There really is no right side to put the dumbbell in. Why? Because the exercise itself is trash if you're trying to train your oblique. Excellent. A beautiful scientific answer. But apart from it being trash, what else? We know guys by now that the obliques are not necessarily side bending muscles. What do they prefer to do? Rotation. Really? That's what they told you they prefer when you spoke? Because to me they said something else. Something more Base. According to anatomy, the obliques do do side bends. And that's because of their attachment points, the iliac crest and the ribs, among others. Just bringing closer those muscle attachment points creates the action of the muscles, which is side flexion. And B, because we have evidence that the muscle activation of the external and internal obliques is very high and more importantly present during side bends to one side or resisting side bends to the other side. And even though it's very hard for this claim to fight against its trash, it's trash. It still gives a decent fight. So does it mean we shouldn't train rotation at all? Rotation. No. And researchers in some studies also note that each oblique may work slightly differently and therefore it's worth combining. But what did Jeff give instead? And it's a simple side plank lift. And you can see that when I lift myself up, the side that I'm actually training is the underside. Wait, wait. If the obliques don't prefer to do side bends, why did you suggest an alternative exercise that is a side bend. What does it look like I'm doing? If you turn your head sideways, it actually looks like a side bend. <laughs> it doesn't just look, it's the same. Here the resistance bends our spine to the side and we straighten it. And also here the resistance pulls our spine to the side and we have to straighten it. Jeff? Dot com, dot com. So in short, the exercise is perfectly fine. 
also according to Jeff. I mean, do we even have to talk about this one? And finally, from the external oblique, we move to internal rotation, Jeff's biggest enemy. Into an internally rotated position. Cause there aren't two words Jeff says more than internal rotation. Internal rotation, internal rotation, internal rotation. Maybe except dot com. Dot com. But again, there's no reason. Cause A, his definition of internal rotation isn't always correct. Have your thumb pointing down and your pinky pointing up. If you notice what's going on right there, yes, you've got internal rotation. Because anatomically, the thumb position isn't relevant for shoulder rotation. I can have my thumb up like you should by giving a like and still be in internal rotation. Or I can have my thumb down and spill the water and be in external rotation. But that's not the issue. The issue is that there is no evidence backing what Jeff says when we do internal rotation. Get a compression of the tendon from the bottom up. So if this tendon's here and I were to internally rotate, you start to get this, this bending of the ligament over the bone. Because your living body, which is not a plastic muscle model or skeletal remains, doesn't work like that. Or in internal rotation and I raise it up, it actually gets stopped. In reality, Jeff claims the acromion, that bone here, pinches the tendons in the area when we do internal rotation. But we have plenty of evidence like this meta-analysis that there's no relationship between the acromiohumeral distance, which is the same gap Jeff talks about, and pain in adults with subacromial pain. This review concluded that internal rotation actually increased the space between the bone and the tendons or in some cases it stayed neutral. And regarding what Jeff said here. Internal rotation position. As a matter of fact, so much so that if I were to just sit up from the bench, you can see that I'm in the impingement testing position that I would put somebody in if they came into a physical therapy office. There's actually no reason to do this test with a physical therapist who's been updated on science in the last 20 years. Cause this test had very poor specificity, meaning a positive result in the test can occur in conditions other than subacromial impingement. Or in words Jeff will understand, that bursts the dot com bubble. Dot com, dot com. Now pain is multifactorial, meaning it doesn't just come from one exercise, posture or movement. For example, each circle here is a potential cause of low back pain. And as you can see, there's more than one circle. And for every anecdote where someone says, that move messed up my shoulder. I've had two hernias literally doing this exercise alone. You'll find another person who says the exact same exercise. This is a great routine. Help them stay pain free. Reducing tension and pain. One person can say his father did upright rows and suddenly became a millionaire. And another might say his grandpa did them and finally threw his diapers. The point is for every story saying something, you can always find the inverse. That's why we rely on science and context to lean towards what's truly good or bad. You're more than welcome to support the channel by joining the membership. Don't forget to subscribe, it helps a ton. Watch my other videos, leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one. I would show you my balls, but I'd have to show you all my balls just because it's pretty low down here right next to the junk. Dot com, dot com, dot com, dot com, dot com.